Hello and welcome to another video from Elite Dangerous and yes I am a total noob and before we actually jump in and just look at that spacecraft that's actually another player coming out of this space station very cool indeed very cool indeed now this game is not user friendly in any way form or shape and I'm learning quite a lot by speaking to friends who've got the game a little bit more in depth and looking some at some videos so I thought we'd actually have a look at one of the first beginner missions so this is where you're going to start off in your lovely spaceship and what we're going to do is we're going to go down to starport services and we're going to pick a mission something nice and easy to begin with uh, this is all a learning process for me as well we're going to come down here to the bulletin board now this is where we're going to get our contracts and up at the top the available missions it looks like one's hauling scrap and the other one's a fighter one which obviously we're not going to be no good for and i'll leave you to read all that so we're going to get four four and a half thousand credits uh cargo is scrap and we need to deliver it to the crimin corporation at the wolfer terminal starport and it's in the system crimin we've got two hours to complete this and the distance is 9.66 light years away so we've picked our mission now what how do we get there well we're going to come down here we're going to go to the star map. This is how we find our terminal um, and how we actually navigate there. So here we are. This is us, the little blue triangle. Not sure why some are green and blue. Again, that might be for another video. So we're going to be looking for the Kremen. There it is. And as you can see, oh, if I zoom back out again, it's got the little yellow orb around it, which means this is a place that we need to go to complete this mission. I'm actually playing with a 360 pad, so actually trying to go up and down within this map, I can't actually work out the button. Um, no, not good. Can't actually select it. So there is a re easier way to actually get this if you can't actually find it, the place to go within this uh, system. And I'm going to show you how to do that now, because by the looks of it, it's not actually possible to get it this way. Ignore these red lines. I'll explain those in another video. Right, I'm going to go up to the here, up to the navigation, and I'm actually going to type it into where it says enter system name. I'm going to type it in there, and it should, fingers crossed, no, not get it, was it Krim? I'm just going to type in Krim, hit enter, and there we go, we can now select it. So I'm going to select that. Now this one to the right of it with the orbs, if I select that, it's going to pick the route to get there. So as you can see, it's going to take us one, two, three, three hyper jumps in order for us to be able to get to that system. This button here will actually show you Krim uh, and what's actually there. And as you can see, there's some asteroids, some planets, and a little yellow orb down there shows us that's where our objective is, down at this little space station down there. So, yeah. Very nice, and there's lots of geeky information on the left if you want to get there. And I'm not sure what that one is at the end. I think that tells us that there is a trade route available. So let's click launch, get up there, and we'll head out into space. The game really will play a lot better if you've got a joystick. There are uh, things such as rolling on its own axis, left and right, as on the ship there. It's coming in. Um, yeah, it really is difficult because th there's so many buttons in the game that the 360 pad, as you can see, I'm just about doing this here. But being able to rotate sort of horizontally is a real benefit when you're coming into land in certain places, and it's quite difficult coming into the starport when you um, with only the 360 pad. So it really is advisable. Now if you look down at the bottom right it says mass locked which means that we're under the gravitational pull of that space uh, of the starport that we've just left so we're going to wait for that to leave we're just getting scanned by the security and it'll say up at the left if they've found anything that they don't like so we pressed l to bring up the landing gear and as soon as that mass locked disappears we're about five to seven which has disappeared now so we can go into our hyper jump and as you can see down at the bottom, let's look at this message up here. Yep, we're all good. 
So just waiting for the hyperdrive to speed up, charge up, and then we'll blast off at light speed. Down there near the main radar, you can see there's a little blue circle pulsing. That's where you want to aim for a little dot in the middle, and then we'll jump through hyperspace. As this is three jumps to get there, I may cut out a little bit because you don't want to see this three times, uh, even though it is a very cool effect. Um, it'll automatically stop us there. Whoa, we're a little bit too close to that sun, we don't want to burn up. And we're going to move the little radar again to the next blue one. This may be on the other side of this sun, so let's be careful we don't burn up here. Yeah, we're getting a little bit hot. Jesus, that's bright. Um, as soon as we've lined that back up again on the little uh, compass at the bottom, we're going to hyperdrive again to the next system. Lots of stuff in here. Uh, and we're going to jump, and I'll see you on the other side as soon as this hyperdrive has built up. Frameship drive charging. There we go, I've actually cut a chunk out there because there was a couple of other jumps. Now as we're approaching, I'm still at uh, hyperspeed, blasting towards this, and you can see the countdown in light years getting there, and the time underneath. And if you look at the bottom left, where it says alignment, we have a distance bar and a speed bar. We really want to get those two lines to be together in the blue zones, so you can see my speed needs to come down a little bit, so that when we get there, We've got actually slow enough to jump out of hyperspeed without flying straight past or straight into what we're aiming for. So I'm just going to slow my speed down a little bit as we just aim for this. We don't need to spin, I'm just doing it for interest, otherwise it's just a bloody straight line getting all the way there. And we're just going... This is going to slow down eventually. As you can see over to the top left, there's obviously a planet and those rings are objects that are rotating around its axis. See, we're getting closer and closer now. What's this little asteroids flying around? I don't know whether you can actually lock into those and get minerals later on. There's lots of stuff. Every single star you can see here now is not a flat object, it is actually a generated object that we can go to and visit. All the full Milky Way, the full solar system, everything's in here, including Challenger. I've been told you can go see Challenger and its satellites. So we're almost close now, those bars, as soon as that top bar goes down for the distance, I'm going to press J to jump out of hyperspeed, there we go. So it's safe for me to jump out now of, of the light speed. Oh, there we go, there's our objective. Just take a little bit to get your head round. I've been playing this for a couple of days now and you do pick it up, but if it wasn't for my friends helping me, I really would be struggling with this. So there, there's the terminal that we need to land at. So I'm going to come down here, Contacts, I'm going to lock it. Contacts again, and I'm going to request docking. Now, yep, so we'll proceed to land at pad 12, and we have a time limit to actually land there. If we loiter around here or we've got stolen goods, then there's a different method for getting into some of these, but I may do that in another video. But for now, well, there's a planet over there with rings, which you could go do mining later on as you get better craft and better equipment for your ship. And we're just going to come in here. Now this is where the flying with the 360 pad is not easy at all. Really struggling with this bad boy. Um, the ability for a joystick is so much easier because I'm having to use the bumpers for speed. You can't just sort of blip it up or down. I have to go all the way down and then all the way back up again. So I'm just going to ease my way in here. The little speed bar is the little... Uh, row of bars on the right hand side in front of the circle in front of me and if, if I put the speed down obviously I'll slow down but if I keep it in the blue area it means I've got the full maneuverability I can move around a lot easier so I'm just going to increase my speed a little bit and we'll line it up and we've got to go through these little gates here the green and red flashing ones we've got to go in here so I'm just going to try and manoeuvre myself in here 
and you're going to see what a balls up I make of this. Another player there just showing me how it's done. Straight in, no bother. Fucking heck. Now, according to friends and developers, there will be uh, different interiors for different areas, such as uh, starships and starports. They're not all going to look the same like this, and I've just made a fucking ball of this. I think I put my landing gear down too soon, and I've caught it on those bars. So we'll go back around. Yes, and there also will be the ability to land on planets and get out, uh, have a look around your craft. Uh, and even the possibility to fly with other people, aka Star Citizen. Now, Star Citizen really does look the tits, but whether they can deliver it in 2015 when they said they would is another thing. But for now, this is the closest you're going to get to a full on space sim. And if you played the original Leap, like I did on the Acorn Electron, didn't even have a BBC Micro, they were only at school. Then this really is, you know, we've, we've jumped a long way, haven't we? Right, so I'm going to come in here and land, and then we're going to get rid of our contract or cash it in, or deliver the goods, whatever it is. Um, beginning missions really are, you want these easy ones, you don't want anything too complicated. Now if I'd come into the terminal and requested to land, and it said denied, it may be because I've helped another term, uh, star system or another alliance who own the spaceship, so I've, some, I've almost become like a baddie, an enemy, and they may not let you land, or it may be that the space station is full, and you have to wait for other players to leave the space station so you can come in. Different space stations have the ability to upgrade your craft, buy minerals and uh, lots of things. The game is friggin huge. And when I say huge, there are 400,000 stars. Right, so I'm just gonna land in here. There we go. We're all landed nice and good. And now it's just a matter of cashing this in. So we're gonna go up to Starport Services. Down to the uh, bulletin board. Where are we? There we go. And there's the top one. I'm going to select it. And there we go. Give cargo. And for that, we got four and a half thousand credits. And none of that means anything to me for now. Uh, and I'll leave that for now. I hope that's been a little help to you as a new beginner and a noob in space like I am. Game's very slow burner, but it's one of the, it's really addictive. It's like you're a truck simulator. You'd think it would be boring, but you want to keep coming back and playing it again, so... <laughs> anyway, hope that's helped you. I shall see you in space sometime soon with some more videos. I learn as you learn, that's the whole point of it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.